Oh, we get this from the Times of India. We have U.S. sends troops, armored vehicles to Syria to counter Russia. That's very interesting. That is mm, mm, in interesting. I'm going to say it's interesting. Sounds shocking. Sounds uh, really, uh, really shocking. But well, let me just give you the shorthand version of this. So basically, as I read it, and I'm going to look at the article here, I'm going to give you guys a chance to make your own assessment. But as I read it, it seems to me that the Russians have been engaging possibly... Possibly, probably not. Possibly one-sided uh, hot dogging. Coming up close to U.S. troops, sideswiping vehicles, doing like just kind of little ticky tacky things, like putting some people at risk. But uh, kind of what young idiots might do. Uh, I don't know whether the Russian. Um, I would hope that the Russian military maybe uh, put them in check, but. Uh, I don't know whether the U.S. troops are doing the same, but it could be something more than that. I, probably not, but I don't know. Maybe not. I'm going to cover the thing and then let you decide. So this is the U.S. has deployed additional troops and armored vehicles into eastern Syria after a number of clashes with Russian forces. It clashes. Including vehicle collision that injured four service members. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Let's get down to where they're talking about the... Okay, so here's the one of the incidents. Uh, two Russian helicopters flew above the Americans, and one of the aircraft was within about, about 70 feet of the vehicle. Russia, which backs the Syria government... Okay, we know that. Uh, and the defense ministry blames the U.S. for the collision. The ministry said Russia had notified the U.S. led collision about the Russian military police convoy's route and said the U.S. tried to block the Russian patrol. The four American service members injured in the crash received concussions. U.S. troops are usually like, okay, whatever, I don't care. The crash, cr oh, here, here's the detail I wanted. The crash last month took place near Dayrik in northern Syria where Russian troops should generally not be precedent. While they're, oh, never mind, you're not going to give me the details of it. Oh, come on. I want the details of it. This is the second time that Bradleys have been sent into Syria. So, the mechanized entry... You know, I, don't, I don't care about what they're here. Oh, I love the statement at the end. The coalition forces remain steadfast in our commitment of ensuring the enduring defeat of Daesh. Now, like I said uh, earlier, the number of troopers that we're talking about is is very, very... Very, very minimal. I'll see if I can find it here. The troopers are just a, a, a few, I think a few Bradleys, and and that's about it. Oh, a few Bradleys and less than 100 troops. So we're just talking about, I don't know what, uh, probably it sounds like there are a few Bradleys and maybe some more patrols, maybe our uh, traffic controls. So get some, some stuff set up further up and, like, mark out things. That's probably where a lot of this conflict is, is happening as well, where the Russians and the U.S. are moving at the same place, and they're both checking up advanced uh, traffic controls, because you'd want to do that for security purposes alone when you have significant intersections. I'm sure they do that. So I think that's probably where a lot of this, and I bet you that's what this is for for them to get some more to prove. That's probably, if I were willing to bet, that's probably what this is really about. Now, the United States, they're ostensibly to fight the Daesh, but really, they're really there to, I believe, they're fundamentally really there to keep that area destabilized because they do not want, ultimately, for Assad to outlast this. They ultimately want Assad to still fall. They're still holding on to that hope and they just should let it go and uh, they just should give up the ghost man Syria belongs to Russia just does I mean I don't know how the Syrians feel about that but I imagine the Syrians probably feel protected belonging to Russia so and uh, I think that the Russians are also now I, ha I do have another bias there in that uh, the Russians are uh, well, if you watch an earlier story from today where I talk about the Rajavans, the Russians are much more amenable to the Rajavans working out a practical deal with Assad so they can 
they can sustain a relative enough amount of uh, autonomy to continue their uh, their basically their non-state state state I'll say uh, they're they're really practicing a form of if you want to call it anarchy or anarchism it's not strictly speaking by what some anarchists would call anarchy I would call it anarchy but it's a, it's more in the muni- it's a municipalist type of anarchy that many anarchists don't consider anarchy because it's municipalism even though they're in name municipal it's uh, basically at the municipal level that it allows for a, a measure of uh, a shared uh, governance that has some sense some temporary type of hierarchical structures but the structures are temporary there's like for instance how they do their policing where they have people serving for a year or two years whatever it is you're not you're not a cop for life we don't create a cop class uh, we don't create a leader class we have rotating leadership and so there's ways that you can have high, somewhat hierarchical structures for the the uh, I guess the, the the efficiency of 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 work that that serves larger structures, like for instance, policing a large area. Uh, but uh, the the idea is that you just don't allow for the, those structures to develop a permanent class. So you avoid that by not having people serve in that leadership for long. So anyway, that's just a little bit of it. So I'm a little bit biased in that uh, I would like the Rajavans to continue their experiment and a, a Russian Assad is more likely to negotiate and give the Rajavans their space than a Turkish Assad or well yeah Turkish Assad I'll say a Turkish Assad well I want Turkey out and Russia in and the United States out because the United States wants to continue the destabilization and I love my country United States of America first and foremost I can fully disagree with my country's uh foreign policies uh and still love my country so just want to make that clear i know y'all down below you know not that i get comments but when i do they're usually some usually it's one of my clone accounts that makes an angry no i'm just kidding (laughs) Ah! just kidding i would never do that so this uh this is uh i would say this is it's uh you know, it's, un- it's unfortunate, though, because I, I did a story earlier where, where Trump is literally saying today, and today is, what is it, September 19th? Trump is literally saying today uh, that uh, he's, he's, taken, he's been taking troops out, and meanwhile, on that day, it's, they're sending some troops in. But really, it's just a small number of troops, and my, uh, my, the, the unsensational version of this story, by my theory... Oh, by the way, here's where we're talking about Syria here. There's the East Coast there. East Coast! East Coast time, man. Well, or, or, excuse me, not East That's the West Coast. I gotta get my East and my West right. So, so it's out here in the Eastern lands. Eastern lands out here. Out here in the Eastern lands. Eastern lands. Syria. Eastern lands. So, anyway, out there, uh, this is all about just... I think largely advanced traffic control so that they can get there a little faster and make sure the Russians can't get there and play their little games so that they can play the games with Russians. I'm sure that's what's going on. There's, there's, there's nothing really by my, in my assessment, there's, there's nothing shocking about this, but I think it's an interesting story and it's interesting the way people cover it and they probably know better than me. Maybe, maybe they know better than me and they know that I'm right and yet they still wrote it that way. Because if I knew what I, if I was right and I knew I was right, I would write it as uh, U.S. adds uh, uh, some, some U.S. adds traffic police to deal with uh, uh, conflict with Russian troops at, uh, at traffic intersections or something like that. I'd make it very clear to the audience that this is, this is not, not impending doom and, and, and friction with Russia. We, we, Russia... I mean, the, well, there's a reason that the United States wants Assad gone, and it really has to do with uh, gas pipelines, but uh, that's a long story, and I want to keep these things brief, and I'm sure that as I keep covering all these types of stories on this channel, it'll come up, and I'll talk in more detail, but 
I think that the United States at some point has to just concede defeat. Take the L. You lost. It's better for everyone, almost everyone else, even if not us. We're going to take the L on this. It's not the end of the world if we lose here. Uh, it's it's better for everyone else if we just leave. Let Russia have its day. Let them, let them have the land. Let them deal with the freaking Turks and get them out. And uh, everybody's happy, including the Rajavans. And we get to see the Rajavan experiment continue. And all you American SJWs, you need to go over spend a few months in Rajava if you can. Or or just read Al Salon. Just read Abdullah Al Salon. Instead of reading the horrible neo-fascistic feminists that we got in America, read 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 that type of feminism. Read the type of feminism that has women that are fully capable of of going on police patrol with men and uh, know what the heck they're doing. These ladies, they know what the heck they're doing. They're trained. They are, I don't know. It's a, it's a great story going on over there. And it's a great contrast. And it shows that it's, it's, not, it's not the idea of SJW in and of itself that's so horrible. It's when you interject the moral supremacist, authoritarian, certainitarian uh, coercion into the exchange that it turns into anything just as evil as anything else from Pol Pot to Hitler from numerous popes and kings in Christendom all throughout human history these uh, human beings that uh, raise up armies of, uh, of, d of willing destructors uh, using appeals to high moral certaintarianism not only appeals but demands of high moral certaintarianism and the Rajavans they do justice right even though I still don't really agree with them uh, ideationally philosophically I don't I don't radically disagree with them so I'm not I, there's a lot of things I agree with them on but uh, I I would I would if 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 America followed the Rajavan model right now, I would be really really happy. I could live with that SJW any freaking time of the day, any day. If we could have the ability to choose, and by the way, that's a big thing, the ability to choose to live like the Rajavans do here in America, I would do that. I would do that right now. So uh, I would totally. <laughs> I'm on board with that. So there you go. Don't worry about the headlines. America and Russia are not headed to war over Syria, and these troops are are just a few little guys to uh, just kind of uh, try to make sure that uh, those intersections uh, get a little bit less uh, frictiony. That, that's about the size of it, as I see it. Have a nice day. <laughs>